today is a very special day for me actually uh, because this day last year I, I landed in London uh, coming outside of uh, my home country for the first time and I never imagined I will be here today presenting at this August gathering in the prestigious CCP4 uh, study weekend so I thank uh, the organizers for giving me this opportunity okay this is So uh, I'm sure several people have already mentioned maximum likelihood and uh, LLG before me. All, I, mean, I think every speaker mentioned it at least once. So uh, in this context, uh, LLG is central to several calculations, and uh, uh, several decision making is based on the scores of LLG. And in this context, uh, I am working on this part of this equation, I, which is uh, the RMSD that you expect before you determine the structure, actually, uh, between the model that you have and the target, which is used in the, cal in the calculations of LLGI. Uh, just to note, uh, though this is RMSD, we refer to it as VRMS, which is actually variance of RMSD, uh, which is slightly different from the other kinds of RMSD. And this is purely in the context of LLGI calculation, so I will be referring to this RMSD as VRMS. So <clears throat> this can be calculated once the structure is solved, but what we are interested in is uh, to estimate it initially, which should be as good as possible. Uh, and this was not available at that point of time when, when, the, when we wanted to come up with a, this form. So my colleague Rob embarked on this journey of carrying out large number of MR trials wherein he chose several targets and for each target several models were chosen and then these mod the sequences were aligned and based on the sequence alignment the models were trimmed, prepared accordingly and a large number of MR calculations were conducted and uh, around 20,000 MR trials were carried out in, the, in, the, in his database. And from using this knowledge from all these several calculations he has come up with this form to estimate VRMS. This is great, but there is a limitation that we know, now know. <clears throat> this is using the term sequence identity here, but sequence identity do not clearly explain sequence relationship. As you can see in this case, the identity is low, but the sequences are highly conserved because you have conserved substitutions and partial substitutions. So. <clears throat> I mean, so, uh, uh, partially conserved substitutions. So we were wondering what scores could be used to replace sequence identity and come up with a better term for estimating VRMS. Uh, and several decades earlier, actually, uh, several people have worked on how best to estimate or define sequence similarity and come up with several matrices. Uh, some of them are listed here uh, based on uh, studying sequence similarity of uh, known homologous structures, or studying structure-based sequence alignments and understanding from them, or various other kinds. And how does it look? You know, for example, there is a substitution matrix called Gone matrix score, wherein uh, some substitution, for example, serine, I cannot, I cannot see from here, okay. So for example, serine, if it is replaced with cysteine, it is given a score of 0.1, wherein proline, is penalized with 3.1. So these are, these are various kinds of matrices, and we use them all to score our alignments. Uh, when we were at it, we thought, why not investigate further and understand if there are any correlations coming directly from model properties or our target. So we took several properties from, from the model, like validation parameters, protein, number of residues. We already knew number of residues was very important. And uh, when the data was uh, 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 deposited and other kinds of properties. And, and from target, we also took several properties like ASU volume, whether it is a polar space group or otherwise, or uh, data parameters like what is the resolution of the crist crystal diffraction and other parameters, what, what uh, scope fold it has. So at this point of, st of stage, at this stage, we had, for a given uh, model target pair, we had 112 properties. And sometimes we had to consider ratio of these properties and understand how they are correlated in a subset of the data. For example, how the sum of them are correlated 
uh, for, uh, for a particular kind of, uh, uh, or a class of protein. So all these combination, combinations and comparative analysis was uh, uh, is a non-trivial task. So we took an approach of uh, graph databases to understand this data, wherein all the properties associated with the target and the model was represented as node, and the properties associated with uh, uh, the similarity, or for example, sequence similarity, or any other property defining the relationship is, uh, 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 was represented as edges connecting these nodes. Uh, several kinds of analysis could be performed after representing in this form. You, know, you, you can start from here and understand the data, or you can compare several trials between a given pair easily, and you can also on the fly define some subsets and understand how the correlations are within this. So when we did all these things, we found that the model, under the model property, small property score was significantly correlated than all other properties. And for target, we found that the resolution of the target was uh, correlated, which we did not expect, actually. So we were not sure whether this was an artifact of the way that we were carrying out calculations, or was it a true property of the crystal? So we did some more calculations by truncating the target resolution to lower and lower resolutions and perform the tests, and we found that the correlation existed. So uh, what it actually physically means is, just for the fact that the crystal has diffracted to lower resolution, you should expect your RMSD to be higher. So this is, uh, this is what we understood from this. And uh, under sequence similarity, we found Gonet score, no wonder I showed this matrix earlier, uh, was a better represented was better defining sequence similarity than all the other matrices that we used. So how, how does this correlate? You know, so the total correlation for all of this is given here. For example, if you see sequence identity and Gonet score, sequence identity, they, they are comparable for the whole data set. But if it is less than 30% sequence identity, you can see sharp difference between the two. And for the old term, the residual correlation, the, the correlation which uh, the correlation of these properties with the difference between the refined VRMS and the estimated one is the residual correlation. And you, see, you can see we have accounted for these uh, in the new term. And we have come up with this uh, expression. Accounting for mall property of the model and the resolution of the target, including the pre-parameters uh, uh, that were considered. And how does it perform? Uh, we carried out some analysis in borderline cases and there was a rather small jump in the definitive solutions uh, using the new term. But as a whole, the distribution of this ratio between VRMS and EVRMS, I mean, we expect it to be one. Of course, it is not one because our estimates are not perfect. But you can see that the previous estimate uh, was not really Gaussian, but the new estimate is probably better distributed, especially this shoulder. Uh, what it means is, our error estimation was, uh, uh, there was an overestimation of errors when sequence identity was used, but using the Gonet score has made that shoulder disappear in the new term. So we thought, why not extend this to include NMR structures as well, if we were to use NMR ensembles as models. Uh, we followed a very similar protocol uh, as the one followed by Rob, and now we have this many cases specifically using NMR models for uh, 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 MR. And we extended the existing database uh, to include cases for NMR. And we have come up with this functional form for NMR, wherein uh, this small property is actually the average mall property, because NMR is an ensemble of several models. So uh, this is an average mall property for a given ensemble. Uh, ensemble. Uh, and as you can see, the correlation is here, and the residual correlation, which existed earlier, has been taken care of. Especially, it was, it was very poorly uh, 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 modeled in the previous case. I mean, we did not have a specific VRMS term for calculating NMR earlier, so we have made an improvement. This old term is specifically for X-ray. And how, how does the distribution of VRMS over EVRMS see? It's here. So in the previous case, we were overestimating errors. In this case, if we were to use X-ray, uh, uh, the uh, older uh, VRMS term for X-ray, we were uh, uh, underestimating the errors. And with the new term, 
we better we have a better estimation of the errors so how does it compare between the nmr and the xray term please note that i'm comparing with different sequence identity ranges so <coughs> for for a for 100% identical nmr uh, structure if you were to use it as a uh, phasing model you have uh, around 1.2 vrms angstrom vrms the error associated with using 100% is around 1.2 and what does it uh, uh, say in the x-ray it is around here which means using nmr model at 100% sequence identity is equivalent to using x-ray model between 25 and 30% because the errors associated with these models are comparable in summary we found unexpected residual correlation to the target so this was unusual we, we did not expect it so probably due to the disorder associated with the protein crystal uh, we have to expect higher rmsd if the same protein in a different crystal form were to ex uh, were to uh, diffract to a higher resolution using the same model we could probably have a lower estimation for uh, uh, rmsd we should expect a lower rmsd if, if it were to ex uh, 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 diffract for a higher resolution we found that the gonia matrix is a better uh, way of uh, understanding sequence similarity and it, we have used it to replace sequence identity and we have understood the quality of model can influence estimation of vrms and vrms itself actually uh, and we have an improved functional form for both x-ray and a new form for nmr specifically for nmr models and we found a slight improvement in the definitive solutions obtained using the new estimates and again 100% identical nmr model is equivalent to using x-ray model at around 30% sequence identity so acknowledgement uh, i acknowledge uh, i'm very thankful to the entire group of randy especially rob uh, because he did most of the data generation for the x-ray term and uh, uh, he was very kind to not only provide it provide all the data but also explain and make me understand uh, help me understand all the data and i also take this opportunity to thank my supervisors from my phd who took the effort time and probably pain in training me and making me understand several concepts of crystallography uh, my funding comes my position is funded by ccp4 i'm extremely thankful to ccp4 and thank you all <laughs>